guys are ridiculous. These guys are ridiculous. Now, how about them damn Celtics? And we are back with another episode of How About Them Celtics. Sam and I are here recording on Wednesday, November 1st, finally into November. And uh, Sam is, as he said, in costume. Starting November off right. Second day in a row, Sam. So I've tried. So what happened is, is November is famously a month for uh, abstaining from a particular activity. And it's so difficult for me to do so that I've actually become sick. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I uh, am going to be sick all month. <laughs> that caught that caught me off guard uh, I'm, I'm, I'm like stun locked uh yeah well there you go uh sam you like to be sick though and i think that's the most like being sick thing. is one of the most fire things for one day for one day it is fire you're to like be sick. you're feeding into the stereotype that men cannot function when they're sick do you know what i'm talking about like the men like complain and like they get a cold and they're like cry and like can't do anything because they're sick you, you've heard that no, I haven't heard of this. Mm. So it's basically so, like the, the the whole thing is, you know, uh, you know, the, the woman or a mom. It's mom and dad usually. Like mom gets sick, she's still like doing everything, bringing the kids to school, making dinner, all this stuff. Dad gets sick, he has to take the day off work because he has a runny nose. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, like it's true, dude. You, well, you know, sometimes you have to be really courteous. Like you don't want to get your coworkers sick. <laughs> you know it's it's just like a, it's a thing you know sometimes you can afford to do it so you're like okay i'll just stay home today i'll be i'll uh, be a good person uh, i don't want anybody to get sick um you know but yeah being sick is the best because it's a day and jack you you should understand this because you are also a very hard working person like to your credit you're very you're like always working always doing different writing and stuff when you're sick it's just a free excuse you don't have like that guilt like it's like okay I, like i'm just chilling. Know that's where we're different it, i i out on being sick i refuse i don't i don't get sick because you, i'm kind of like low-key i'm kind of like constantly sick like you've seen me that is true the though, commenters like, would know that yeah, <laughs> yeah. i'm kind of just like always sick but i just <laughs> i refuse to let like be sick unless i have like like when i had covid i took like i was like okay now let me chill but like outside of like an actual virus or pandemic or hospitalization i'm i'm not about it i hate being sick because i so you're down for a hospitalization though sure yeah why not (laughs) fire all right noted i hate it i can't do it anyways let's get into the celtics and we're actually going to start with our recap of the celtics pacers game which we're going to be recording after the game uh we're recording this at 126 in the afternoon then we're going to throw this in there so we're going to throw it to future us to recap that game and hopefully we're in a good mood so we'll, we'll find out then and thank you to past jack and sam for throwing it over to library jack and still sick sam who has worn the robe for the entirety of the 12 hours that i've recorded with him three different times today it's impressive respect it, it, honestly you it's respect go all in with the drip i don't know what to tell you i, I only get to wear the robe so the often i'm gonna i'm gonna get my minutes I respect the commitment to the bit. I also respect the commitment to always taking a sip of water immediately after we record instead of beforehand. It's 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 truly a, an honor. It's not even a bit. You have to prepare to talk, buddy. I know, but the point is, it's it's never <laughs> before we start <laughs> recording. It's always if immediately after we start talking. Anyways, <clears throat> we are talking about nothing because there is not much to talk about because the Pacers, or excuse me, the Celtics came out and just stomped <laughs> the Pacers. Uh, the final score of the game, let me find it here in the NBA box score, which has been giving me troubles. Um, it's just not popping up for They won by 50. They, they, they I don't know why the board. Celtics don't pop up on um, the NBA box score because I have the same problem. Yeah, it's weird. Uh, I think it's because they're under favorite teams and they'll pop up and stuff. But the Celtics final score, they beat the Pacers 155 to 104. It's the first time since 1992. They scored 150 plus points. It's the first, it's the most points they've scored since uh, 1959. Um, so you could say it was a pretty good game <laughs> for the uh, for the Celtics. Uh, Jason Tatum had 30 points and nobody else cracked 20, but they had an all around just beat down of a Pacers team that was without Tyrese Halliburton. Um, Obi Toppin was a team worst minus 41 on the night, which is <laughs> seriously impressive. Um, the Pacers shot 13.5% from three, five for 37 and the Celtics shot 57.1% from three. Uh, and they only took 35 of them, which is, which is probably bang average or a little less than that for the Celtics. But I mean, just back to back games of, 
complete and utter domination for a Celtics team that is the only undefeated team left in the NBA, I believe, right now. Dallas? Oh, is Dallas still undefeated? Am I talking at my ass? Okay, my bad. Yeah, yeah. Dallas is also undefeated. Uh, Dallas is also undefeated still because the Nuggets lost tonight. So yes. there is that. Yes, you're correct. Celtics but still looking dominant. They're playing the way they should play against teams that aren't particularly on their level. Now the Pacers are a good team. Don't get it twisted. They just didn't have Halliburton tonight. He's a difference maker for them last season when he was healthy. They were a legitimate playoff team. Unfortunately for them, he was unhealthy for a bulk of the season, so they ended up watching all of the postseason from the couch and now he's hurt again three games into the se- four games into the season whatever you want to call it for them i guess technically three because he was hurt before tonight's game and the pacers didn't belong on the same floor as the celtics and it's awesome mm-hmm. the celtics are not playing down to teams they're not showing mercy they're coming out and opening up 15 plus point leads in the first quarter this is They're getting everything production you have from... ever asked for. Yeah, this is like, <laughs> hey, just please just perform to the level you should perform at. You're getting double-digit production from all five of your starters consistently. It's not fluky. Porzingis had his worst game, and he was three of seven, and he had 13 points. You had a monster Tatum game, 30 points on 15 shots. Only five of them were threes. This is everything. That This is... This is the Vince McMahon crying. This is special. That's what it is. <laughs> he's posting up. He's yeah. going inside. He's looking strong finishing. Derek White was scorched earth today. He didn't miss anything inside the arc. Four of seven from three. Holiday only missed three shots as well. He was a menace on the boards. He had seven rebounds. Second highest on the team, I believe. Tied with Brown. He's doing everything. Mm-hmm. I love this. Everybody's just taking whatever is given to them. They're not forcing anything. At least they haven't lately. Some forcing early on, but free-flowing offense. Everybody's comfortable. Everybody's looking out for each other. The pick and rolls look great. The inside feeds look great. Porzingis had a nasty pass to Jalen Brown off a uh, wraparound when it was a fake dribble handoff, and then Brown just continued inside and had a big dunk. They're, they yeah. look like they're starting to have chemistry, and they've only played four games. Yeah, it's it's really fun to watch. And also, before we continue, uh, we had some comments the last time I was at the Garden about the audio levels. I'm sorry. There's so much we can do. I'm, I'm like whispering, so I don't know if I'm too loud or quiet. So let us know in the comments if, if you sound I'm relatively loud. loud. And, okay, let, just in the comments, let us know if I'm too loud or Sam's too loud. And I'll try to adjust my mic next time at the, I'm at the Garden. But um, yeah, I mean, this like I said, there's, there's only so much you can say about a win like this. The Celtics were completely and and like it wasn't close like there was no competition uh, on the court the pacers were never you know on the same planet as the celtics in this game um brown looked good he was finding his spots tatum had 12 rebounds and 30 points porzingis had a bad game and he still put up 13 and 6 and only took seven shots and that's the key thing that Missoula talked about he said it's not about every night like porzingis has been great for the past few games and then he only took seven shots tonight but he still defended he still passed the ball he still did all the things and that's what matters on this team drew holiday was just nailing threes he had three on the night 15 7 and 4 for him Derek white was fucking awesome again 18 points three and four and on seven to ten four seven and then later in this podcast which we recorded earlier today you're going to hear sam and i talk about the bench struggles <laughs> well <laughs> sam hauser shot five of six from three with 17 points peyton pritchard shot six of ten from the field and two of three from three with 15 points four rebounds and nine assists so uh, i think the title of this is probably going to be and the duality of the celtics bench because of how hot and cold they can be yeah um, i literally wrote an article yeah. about like hey these guys suck and they're inefficient mm-hmm. and it's a problem they need to get their head out of their ass and knock down shots and it went up today on celtics blog and then uh sam hauser shoots five of six from three and pritchard shoots two of three so egg on my mm-hmm. face yeah well, not egg. Maybe maybe they read your articles and they said, damn, we need to be better. Yeah, maybe I fired them up. You should have asked. You should have been like, yeah. Joe, did you hear, you know, I'm from Celtics blog. We did post an article today about the bench hasn't been doing a whole lot. Did the guys read it? Were they upset? Is it bulletin mm-hmm. board material? We want to know. You're right. Yeah, that's my bad. I got to ask the hard hitters. That's that's on me. I'll be better. Wait till I get um, in there. Every... So you guys know how to juggle? <laughs> 
every single player who was active for the Celtics tonight scored a point. Every single player in the game who was active scored a point, except for one. Only one player, only one active player in this game did not play on either team. It was Daniel Tice. Crime. (laughs) So if you've come to us via Celtics blog, you have read my displeasure with Rick Carlisle for not playing the great a scathing Daniel review Tice. over Carlisle. Yes. Daniel Tice, one of the sneaky great Celtics maybe ever, the GOAT. Tice, <laughs> five seasons with the Celtics, two stints, comes to the team from the Euro League in the summer of 2017, makes a small impact as a rookie. His, his role grows a bit as, as the years go on. He's playing minutes in the Eastern Conference Finals as a starter gets traded away, comes back. When he's get traded back, he's like, I'm so excited to be back. This was the only team I wanted to play for. Then he's part of the Brogdon trade last summer, so he's in Indiana since then. And uh, the man did not get to play in a 50-point blowout. He was, if you go on NBA.com and you can see it on the screen, but if you're listening on audio, he is the only player with a DNP coach's decision. Do you know how disrespectful that is? To a man that has left it all on the parquet, a legend. He's somebody that, when he was traded last year, came to the playoffs to support the Celtics. The man was in the crowd. He was out there in the stands. I think it was for game seven against Philly. He was a good luck charm. And Rick Carlisle doesn't pay his respect. Rick Carlisle is a former Celtic. He should understand the brotherhood, the... The nice little round of applause that the man would get had he got to go out there. He probably would have got some cool dunks. Mm-hmm. I mean, the crowd would have loved that. Every time he scored, they would have went ballistic because they don't care. It's a 50-point game. You know? I agree. I mean, usually I'm more... <laughs> Daniel Tice does look good uh, in the photo that we have on the screen. Uh, so check in on YouTube if you're listening on audio platforms. But <clears throat> usually... I think Sam is frozen. Hopefully, it's not me. Was it? Was he, were you frozen? Okay, it was good. me. It was me. I, when I'm at the garden, I panic because I'm not sure. Um, yeah. You usually, I am the more level-headed one. I'll be like, "Eh, it doesn't matter." Like it, it in in my head, it's like, "Okay, it makes sense they didn't play him. They probably wanted to get the young guys from running a blowout. It's whatever." But no, I, I am fully on board with your point. Fuck that. Like p- p- play Daniel Tice. He 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 is the man at the garden. You can't not play him. I, I'm fully on board with the movement. Logic I mean, out you have window. Some... <coughs> rat, 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 ratless. No, yeah, ratless, rat. ratless. Rick Carlisle. Mm-hmm. Since we've already done the rat list, mm-hmm. you, you need to play Tice in this situation. <clears throat> there were enough garbage time minutes for Jack and I to get in the game tonight. You're telling me you couldn't have put this man out there for even two minutes, just to to jog up and down a couple times, smile at the crowd. Terrible mm-hmm. assault. Agree. You could could not agree more. That was. I mean, in a game, the Celtics won by 15, where there is much to take away. That might have been the worst thing to come out of it. The, the, genuinely. Yeah. The worst. I mean, they dribbled out the clock at the end of the game. They should have went for another basket out of spite. That's what I would have did. <laughs> Agree. Do you don't want to play the boy Tice? Fine. We'll put 157 up instead of 155. Also, you still Agree. have people online being like, yo, they should bring him back. We've said it. I said this to Bobby Carithi, who's about five feet to my right. I said, I handshake bet him. I said, I bet Daniel Tice signs with the Celtics on a minimum deal when his contract is up. I stand by it. I think oh. he'll be back. I mean, I think he'll be just back. go on Reddit today and just look. People are like, Daniel Tice back? <laughs> Search Daniel Tice on Twitter. People are like, Daniel Tice, are they going to trade for him again? I tweeted Last it. month, people were literally talking about it. Mm-hmm. My, my working theory is Celtics trade for somebody in the TPE, combine the $5 million with two, $2 million salaries, bring Daniel Tice back. Easy. Why not? Easy. Bring him back. Anyways, any other uh, storylines we missed from this game that was just, I mean, I'm, the title of the podcast is going to be Celtics stomp Pacers in like stupid, like something crazy because they just, like I said, this was, this was, Celtics what was more dominant? This... Pacers win. <laughs> and what what was more, bench. <laughs> what was a more brutal stomp, this or the Wizards? Uh, this watching, is, this well, is... Washington, because they had their top guys. This is my take. I think the Washington Wizards win was a better stomp. This was more of a methodical 
discombobulated, like methodical tearing apart. Like, because in, in the Washington game, it just felt like they were playing isolation. We're better than you. We're just going to score. You guys suck. That's it. Against the Pacers, they were doing, you know, pick and rolls. They were attacking mismatches, but also making plays for each other. It felt this was the first game where the Celtics offense felt like it could also be that free flowing thing. I asked uh, everyone who spoke about mismatches, and they were all like, yeah, it's about communication. It's about sacrificing. Drew Holiday said, ball moves faster than man, which is an all time quote. Um, which I'm going to write about for Celtics blog for the morning as you're listening to this. And so I think the Wizards game was a better stomp, but the Pacers game was the sort of coming out party for how good the Celtics offense can be once they're a unit. And it was like a, a, a methodical tearing apart of this Indiana team who was without their all-star. Get ready for the NFL season with incredible offers from FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers can bet $5 and get 200 in bonus bets guaranteed that's guaranteed plus all customers who bet five dollars will get one hundred dollars off nfl sunday ticket from youtube and youtube tv now is the best time to join FanDuel. it absolutely is the app is easy to use and you can be on everything from spreads to player props and more so visit fanduel.com boston kick off the nfl season with an offer you won't want to miss FanDuel, official partner of the nfl I mean, Tatum was just toying with these guys. <laughs> he was. He was just like screwing around. He was just I, I going was... to the basket effortlessly, doing Kyrie dribbles and in, in finishing reverse layups. He wasn't Dude. even trying to dunk. I was up on the ninth floor with Bobby and Noah uh, Dalzell, who writes for Celtics Blog. I was just like, you can ask him, just dying laughing. Every time Tatum did something, I was just like, I was just like no, laughing. Not supposed to show emotion like, there, Jack. That's very well, unprofessional you're... label on the show. Well, no, no, no. The difference is I'm not supposed to show emotion towards the team. I wasn't like rooting for the Celtics. I was just like laughing at how dominant, like it, it was stupid. He was just, he was just like, it wasn't close. He was just like, I'm the best player in the world. He, I tweeted it. He looked like he's the best player on the planet. Genuinely. Nah, he, he looks like he's ready to go win an MVP. I mean, listen, we've mm-hmm. seen four games and I'm <laughs> sure this time last year I was like MVP. Well, and then he like came back from the all-star it. break and looked brain dead. So there's that crazy part about it is ahead of the season. We said if Tatum is winning MVP this year, there's a problem because something because, you know, the Celtics should be sharing the ball more. The stats should be more evened out. Right. We're like, OK, you know, last year Tatum was sort of the guy this year. It's Tatum and a bunch of other all star caliber players. So he shouldn't have the stats to be the MVP, but he's putting up the stats to be MVP and also like the team looks good overall as, as a unit like T- Tatum's three-point percentage is the same at like uh or it's better than last year at 35 to 37 this year he's still taking the same amount of threes again this is this is through three games but he's shooting 55 percent from the field because he's working the post and he's actively getting inside it's great it's awesome (laughs) it's it's he, he looks incredible the celtics look incredible i it's it's only four games into the season and obviously they haven't lost yet so we need to see how they can respond to adversity but like they they're playing like the best team in the NBA by like a, a long shot, which is it's fun. It's fun to watch. Yeah, I anyway. used to dream of moments like this. <laughs> any uh, any final takes before we throw it back over to uh, past selves? No, no, I gotta be up right. five and a half hours. It's terrible. That's tough. That's tough. All That's right, we'll throw it back the to uh, <laughs> the airport drives are tough, but you gotta do it. You can do it because well, airports in my you... city. <clears throat> Still, but when you but then when you need a ride, someone will drive you. It's like that mutual respect. Um, anyways, we'll throw it over to uh, our past selves. Thank you uh, to future Jack and Sam for filling us in on the Pacers Celtics game. I keep wanting to say Wizards because they just played the Wizards, but I'm thinking <laughs> now to the Pacers. But first piece of Celtics news we got: Jordan Walsh was assigned to the main Celtics. Uh, he's going to be go, going to get some reps in the G League. We kind of knew this would be happening based on him not getting reps in that Wizards game excuse me, where the bench came in. Uh, it, it was kind of like the, the the rumblings throughout training camp. Yeah, he's probably going to spend more time in man this year. And I think it's probably for the best. You want to get him real reps. He's just not going to get playing time on this Celtics team. We, we've barely seen the bench get actual playing time on the Celtics team. So Jordan Walsh certainly isn't. So get, get him some reps in Maine. I, I think that's probably um, the best option for his development. Yeah, it was strange not to see him suit up on that Monday game because – I mean, it was over from the jump. Like Celtics ripped off yeah. a quick run to open the game, and by the end of the first quarter, 
they were up what 23 and it never really got much closer than that until the bench got their hands on the game at the end so with all that being said it's good that he's getting assigned to Maine so he can actually get some opportunity to grow as a player because in the summer we saw a ton from Jordan Walsh more than we probably thought we were going to see in the summer league and it would be really cool to see that get carried over into the regular season, right? You don't want to just let him sit there and waste away on the bench. He's an awesome, awesome prospect. He's fun. He's got all kind. He's got the defensive potential. He can realistically be seen as a role player. So you want to tap into that as much as you can. And I think sending him up to Maine is a, a good way to get it rolling. I agree. Uh, I agree. I agree. Glad to see him up in Maine. Hopefully, we'll get up there to Maine to see him for a couple of games. Stop by Ironclad East. Yeah. Shout out Joey Spatulas. That'll be the goal. But uh, before we move on to the next thing, I just saw something on Twitter that I wanted to talk about, but it's not worth its own segment. So somebody tweeted something called the gunner rating. It's a new stat. The percent of time you do something other than pass when you have the ball. Um, and I like this. <clears throat> Who who leads it? Do you want to tell me this? I mean, I guess I'll just make this its own like short segment at this point. I don't know. All right. Yeah. So Luca has to be up there. No, Luca passes the ball all the time. What are you talking about? Okay, Luca averages like ten assists. Oh, he's well, he's on the list, but he's like twenty-two. He's thirty-four. Yeah, well, he has a percent. he has the ball a lot. Like he he's always on the okay. ball. Uh, let's see. Think Russell players... Westbrook has to be somebody that's on this list high up. No, you're thinking to no. Russ isn't on the list. You're thinking to. Oh, let's let's go with stars who have the ball a lot. Think more. Who does not pass? Like that is what you got to think of for this stat. Okay. <laughs> who Sam is the Hauser ultimate? Has to be up there because he's catch and shoot. No, not so far. <clears throat> Marcus Morris. Uh, he, he hasn't, hasn't played. played. Yet. Do you want me to tell you number one so you can get a feel? Yes. Cam Thomas is number one. I wouldn't have guessed that, but I can <laughs> see what you mean. His non-pass percentage, 50.42%. <laughs> Over 50% of the time he gets the ball, he ain't passing that. It's going He's up, the baby. only player in the only the player in the NBA that is 50% or higher. <laughs> oh no. Um when Binyama's in two at 47.46, Cam oh. Reddish in three at 47.06. There is a Celtic in the top 20. Only one Celtic in the top 20. Do you want to tell me who it is? <laughs> I half want to say it's Jalen. Yeah, <laughs> he's at a uh, sixth on the list. Forty-one Zach point. On this list. Uh, I think I saw him. Zach Levine. No, I don't no. think he is. No, but um, Jalen Brown at forty-one point four four percent is on this list. Yes. Uh, some other names that stand out: Kyle Kuzma is at eighteenth. Um, Lonnie Walker is at fifth. Uh, DeRozan at eight, and Bead Curry at nine ten. Um, non-stars on the list include Malcolm Brogdon at 16, Chris Boucher at 19, but I just thought it was a funny stat. Uh, the Cam Thomas not passing for over 50% of the times he touches the ball was just funny. And then I saw Jalen on the list, so I figured it'd be, you know, something. Uh, Is Rob on that list? Look at it. Um, no, I don't believe so. I feel like it would be guys that, like, their only job is to try and put the ball in the basket. Yeah, to some degree. It, it's like a mix between that and high usage guys. So like you see Cam Thomas where he's just out there to score. You see, you know, LeBron's at um, 15 and like he's a high usage guy. You look at, yes. you know, D- Derek Jones is an example, probably like the Rob example. He's 12th, which is like if he touches the ball, it's probably just a lob. So yeah. that's that. Um, <clears throat> uh, Cam Reddish is like a catch and th- shoot three guy. So th- there's a blend of them on here. I suppose like Duncan Robinson's 25, but KD is 21. So. I just, I just thought it was an interesting stat, and I saw Cam Thomas at 50% above his – that's nuts. So, anyways, yeah. Uh, next thing we have is uh, the senior – Celtic Senior Halloween <laughs> Dance Clinic, uh, which is something that I went to in Roxbury uh, the other day. And I just want to share some photos, talk about the event a little bit. Uh, we can use this time to talk about the Celtics bench. So this will also be the section of the podcast where we talk about the Celtics bench because that's been a hot sure. topic. Um, because Lamar Stevens and, um, <clears throat> excuse me, Delano Banton were at the event uh, getting groovy. They were hanging out. They were dressed yeah. up in their Halloween costumes. Delano Banton was dressed as a referee. Lamar Stevens was a Viking. Uh, and also Leon Poe. Leon Poe was there as a big pumpkin. I asked Lamar Stevens, I said, do you think this is what Leon Poe signed up for? When Joe emailed him back, he said, absolutely. This is exactly what he had in mind uh, with a laugh, which was which was funny. But <clears throat> these are the photos. Of the event. Year, right. Because there's uh, a picture of Grant. I think I still have where it's probably the Spider-Man costume. 
<clears throat> Probably, yeah. Uh, Lamar Stevens did say his favorite costume as a kid was Spider Man. So there you go, Sam. Respect. Uh, these are some of the photos I, I caught of Leon Bell. <laughs> Delano Banton, by the way, not about it. He, he was not into it at all. He was not doing the dance. He had home. no interest. Yeah, he he had no interest um, in in this event. Uh, I'll share this. Um... <laughs> Lamar Stevens gets to walking it. around. Look at Lamar. He's crying. Right? Delano, look at Delano. He's just laughing on the side over here. I'm going to direct your attention to Leon Poe in the back. Because uh, when they do the little uh, thing, he just can't stay on his feet. He's committed. <laughs> <laughs> he falls. And every time they did that move where they have to like squat down and like do the fist pump thing, on his ass he just he fell every single time but leon poe was getting into it <laughs> excuse me he he was trying his best uh lamar stevens was there and we did get the chance to talk to them after the event and that's the majority of what i wanted to talk about with this uh portion of the podcast but i just thought it'd be funny to share those pictures too um i asked Lana a bit and what it was like being back in massachusetts uh he said it's good to be back uh just being able to continue to meet more people relationships relationships i had through high school i saw it today it's been great to be back i asked lamar stevens about coming from philadelphia uh, and then coming to the celtics he said i mean in philly they don't really like the celtics but this is what i wanted to do so yeah change of heart for sure i've just been enjoying the process enjoying being part of a great organization and learning with some great players uh asked them about you know what what the conversations with joe have been like and uh bands basically said you know finding ways to impact the game being a dog he emphasizes a lot to the whole roster top to bottom every day it's a grind um it's every day to be, <laughs> excuse me, every day to be better, every day to win the day. Um, and so that's kind of what he's been emphasizing to the whole team. But uh, as far as implementing that, Celtics bench has been uh, struggling. Is that not doing a whole lot? Yeah. <laughs> Just kind of hanging out. Um, yeah. If we want to get into this, I wrote about it for Celtics. Yeah. Blog. Let's talk about the Celtics bench. So through the first three games of this season, very small sample size, nonetheless. They have uh, given the Celtics 15 points per game while making not a lot of shots, not a lot, large percentage <laughs> of their shots. The Celtics bench is dead last in output with that 15 points per game, dead last in efficiency and second worst in three point percentage. It's just not the kind of thing that you need from the supporting cast of a very top heavy team. Now, yeah, is this the end of the world? Obviously not. The Celtics have yet to lose, but. It would be nice if guys that you're putting out there just to make shots were able to make shots. And it's not for a lack of good looks that they're getting. There have been plenty of clean looks. And it feels like this is going to be a thing where water finds its level. So I don't think anybody should be overly concerned. But if it's something you would like to, uh, you know, make a fuss about now, go for it because it's your opportunity. Uh, we talked to Ben Vallis on Monday for the live stream that nearly wasn't because of playback with the blackout and everything like that. And he was concerned about the lack of just burst coming from the bench. Even Al Orford hasn't been overly efficient. I think he's made good use of his minutes and he's still been a positive impact player because he's doing tons of work on the glass. He's really trying to make an impact any way that he can, but he's still only shooting like what? 32, 36% from the field. Like this it hasn't been fantastic. Horford. <laughs> Yeah, Horford hasn't done much in the scoring column, but he's making his impact out there. And I mean, it's a small sample size, obviously. I truly stand on the fact that, like, I wonder how much it matters if the bench struggles or not. Like, there, there's going to be inevitably, uh, inevitably, there are going to be nights where you need the bench to score. Yes. But I mean, they're going to have one of the bottom bench scoring marks just because of how much the starters do, right? Like, they just have that good top yeah. end talent. So I think that's a big part of it. That's not where the gripe is. I don't care. They can be dead last in scoring every single game this year throughout the whole season. I don't care. They just need to make the most of the opportunities they get. They don't have to make 100% of their shots, but Peyton Pritchard's making 15% of his shots overall, 10% from three. Hauser's shooting 20% from three. These are two guys that are supposed to be catch and shoot marksmen off the bench, and you're getting yeah. sub 20% combined from the two of the 15% combined if you average the percentages. It's just not good enough. And then you have mm -hmm. other guys that are other options that you brought in over the summer, right? Like O'Shea Brissett rules. We talked a little bit about him off the air. He was obviously uh, a big part of the comeback against Miami last week. But at the same time, 
his inability to be consistent from deep leaves the rest of the team kind of handcuffed because you're able to see opposing teams throw extra men at the stars, the ball handlers, making it even more difficult for them to score. In a playoff series, that's not going to fly. A team like Miami is going to absolutely exploit anything they can. I I will say, I think O'Shea did make up for that, especially in that Miami game with cuts. He was probably the best no, he rolled. on the court. He was really good, and I think that is, if anything, a unique aspect O'Shea could bring to the court because he was really good on cuts. I have some notes on it in my notebook, which I, I don't want to grab right now, nice. but he, he was like off the ball. He was in, in the corner. Jalen did it too. Like He was in the corner, and his guy like helped off a little to help on the pick and roll, and he just back cut and dunked all over everybody. Like <clears throat> Those are the plays that you get with O'Shea that will help make up for the fact that he's not a, a good three-point shooter and probably won't be in general. Um, and, I, and I think all of the bench guys have those little niche things they're good at. Like you saw at the end of the Wizards game, Lamar Stevens broke his own, which Celtics just couldn't do last year in general. So that was fun to see. Uh, he's very comfortable in the mid-range, and I so I think his lack of three-point shooting can you know, be made up for in that sense. Like even Donald Bannon, like if you need an extra playmaker, if, if Drew Holiday or Derek White misses a game, like you'll have him on the bench despite his inconsistencies. Um, <clears throat> Sam Hauser is a good three-point shooter. He may be struggling right now, but everyone knows he can shoot. And so even if he is not making them, He's still gonna ha- make that like create that gravity. Like teams will still guard him because they know Sam Hauser can shoot the ball, and so he's still gonna draw. Like it's almost the opposite of, of O'Shea Brissett. Like teams won't guard O'Shea Brissett, and so he he has to you know guard on cuts regardless if he makes it. Teams are gonna guard Hauser regardless if he's making because they know he can shoot. Yes, why true? Our Duncan Robinson regardless. So <laughs> at least he'll create that spacing, and the same goes for Pritchard. Teams are gonna guard him. Teams know what he can do with the ball. Teams know how talented he and he is. I, I feel like Pritchard's one of those players who. Everyone around the league knows he's talented more than the fans even do. Like everyone's know, okay, yeah, this guy. Like we gotta watch it. Like this guy's he's a baller. Um, just like mad respect for Peyton Pritchard. Yeah, the only bench guy I'm legitimately worried about is Lucanet. Doesn't look very good. Like he just doesn't look effective at all. And I still think he can be fine for the seven to ten minutes he's inevitably inevitably going to play. But I think you really got to consider as much as I'd love to be Ishketa. I think it is more of Let's play some small ball. Let's let's you know make sure Horford or Przingis is out there, and if not, we can run some Lamar Stevens guarding some fives if the matchup calls for it. Let's run O'Shea out there and run a small ball lineup and just get out and run and then help on defense with with Jalen Brown guarding the center. So, I think that's sort of where the creativity could come in. But right now, the bench just isn't as productive or efficient as the point you like to make as you'd like to see it be. Yeah, it, it certainly hasn't been. The efficiency just needs to take a jump. It it is a good point that. The other teams do have to respect these guys. Like one thing I talked about in the Celtics blog article is like, if you're trotting Brissett out there, right. In, the, in a playoff series, you may mm-hmm. see them give him the Grant Williams treatment, which didn't make sense at the time. Cause he was a 41% yeah. three point shooter that year, but they just left Grant and were like, okay, go ahead and like take a bunch of shots that you wouldn't <laughs> normally take and disrupt the flow of the offense. I don't yeah. think they can do that to a Hauser or a Pritchard, but if those guys aren't able to be consistent enough and it results in a Brissett, or even Lamar Stevens getting those extra minutes, you could see more. Please shoot, I dare you in the playoffs. Which and I could go. I think way. that's where they make it up with cuts and the mid ranges. But we'll, we'll have to see what happens. Uh, I'm and all for in, it. I'm all for the. Uh, I'm going to say again, we're recording this at 140. So like, if the bench plays really well against the Pacers, we don't know. <laughs> we don't know about that yet. First three um, games, ass. <laughs> first three games, not great. But speaking of O'Shea Brissett. He did talk at Celtics practice today. Uh, a couple interesting tidbits. We don't have to spend too long on this, but just a couple of things that I, I was there and I heard. Uh, he talked about Neesmith's emergence in Indiana. He said, yeah, he just came in. He hit the ground running. <clears throat> he earned Rick Carlisle's trust. And so, like, good for him. They were, they were obviously teammates last year. Uh, he talked about rebounding in, in his attack mindset in that sense. And he also said um, – Basically, his exit from Indiana was a mutual thing. They were entering this this pseudo rebuild with super young guys, and he's he's mm. not like old, but he he is old enough where they'll probably prioritize playing the Jarris Walkers and and uh, you know th- those younger guys ish. And so he said it was just you know I'll find a place where people are you know the team's going for a championship. I can have a role and make an impact in certain spots, and that's why I chose Boston. But <clears throat> nothing else to do. Uh, revenge game incoming. You guys will cool. know uh, before current me does. That's for sure. If you've made it this far in the podcast, you already know if he had his revenge game or not. Would be pretty cool. 
But uh, yeah, I mean, like I said, we didn't have to spend too much time on that, but he did talk. So we can get into our emails now. Let's let's check in with the emails. Hey. I know we have some from RJ. I know we have some from uh, a new emailer. So let's get in here. Uh, and RJ, and this is after the Wizards game. RJ said, well, that was a game. Evening, guys. Sorry, playback. Crapped out, but good work on setting up the YouTube channel on the mm. fly. Fun to watch the game with you and Benno <laughs> providing commentary. Um, when I heard that Gafford was out for the Wizards, I was duly sad that uh, Keita was out. I don't know if he would have suited up even if healthy, but it was fun to imagine the havoc he would have brought against the Wizards' micro ball lineups. Nice to see the Celtics logging more assists uh, this game, even if it looks a bit ISO heavy. But when Brown, Porzingis, and Tatum got their shot whenever, it was not too surprising. I just wish JT <clears throat> excuse me, would lay off his six seconds of dribbling three-pointers. I, I agree. Congrats to Banton, Mikhailu, and Stevens all seeing the floor and scoring. A nice three-pointer by Stevens, too. Yes. Also, it looks like Banton managed to find his way back into Coach Missoula's doghouse as he don't normally get pulled with two minutes left in a blowout. Uh, he was just getting killed on defense, I think, a little bit. Um, I was happy to see Sam Hauser get lots of time tonight. I did a deep dive, dive in a situation for Celtics blog. Rather than eat up an email, here's a link uh, if you want to check it out. Ratlist, NBA League Pass for screwing up playback. Agree. Yes. Andy Ratlist, Ratlist merch. We're working on it. Teaser. Yes. There you go. Um <clears throat> And uh, just quickly skimming through, I'm not pulling it up, but quickly skimming through this uh, Hauser thing. Um, sure. Basically saying, you know, going through his shot profile, how he did, um, starting the evening in Kosha's Missoula's rotation, et cetera, et cetera. Don't underestimate familiarity. I think that's a really good point, too. If you're familiar with the system, you've been there, you'll get priority. Joe All loves right. his circle of trust. Trivia time. Says oh. RJ, quick trivia question. Can you identify which Celtics teams are represented by the scoring averages of the top eight players? I'll send you the answer in a separate email. Oh. All right, <clears throat> let's do this, Sam. Squad A, I'll read the points out and then we can guess. Uh, we'll do one at a time. Squad A, 25.8 points, 21.3 points, 16.1, 15.6, 10.7, 8, 7, 6, 6, 5. Uh, pff, oh. God, this has got to be a... a... <sighs> I don't know how recent these are either. These just say Celtics team. So <clears throat> I wonder how this squad B has to be Larry Bird, right? 29-7. Didn't he get oh, really close that one year? Squad B, 29-7, 24-7, 27, or 20.7, I should say. 15, 12, 5, 3, 3, 7, 3, 2, 3. This, I think this has to be Larry Bird, but who else would have put up 20? Mikhail didn't put up that many points, did he? Yeah, uh, he probably did. <clears throat> then who put up the other 20? Parish. Okay, do you want to say this is the 86 title team? I don't know what year Bird got close, but I know he got close one year. Sure, we'll make that guess. <clears throat> okay, this, this is the Larry guess. team. Maybe 86. Okay. We'll call it that. Um, <clears throat> squad A is the 25-8, 21-3, 16-1, 15 <clears throat> This feels like Tatum Brown something else, right? I feel like this might be the 2020 team with Kemba. I think Kemba got closer to, to 20 than this, though. Kemba might have been the 21-3, and Jalen might have been the 16. No, no way he averaged that few. <clears throat> Could this be a Pierce and Tuan? I think I don't think the rest of their team was that good, though, <laughs> like yeah. to, to have other three guys. Yeah, I don't know. Fair. I feel like the, the bottom squad is a recent, like, like 2010. Is 19-0. Eighteen nine, seventeen six, seventeen zero, ten. Like seven, it was six, when four, five, Rondo six, five, had stepped three. up, and the rest of the guys could still play, but they weren't at the top mm -hmm. level because the drop off is big. Yeah, I'll back it. But then who is the the ten seven? Like a, a perk or something? Maybe yeah. perk. Maybe it was. Celtic I'll buy that. Jack. I'll buy that. But did Pierce ever average under twenty for the Celtics, even in those late years? I don't know. I, I'm comfortable going Larry for this. We can say, fine, we'll say the 2020 team for this. Maybe this is Kemba, or, or this is a, a late, you know what, this they, might they be had the, enough. <clears throat> could this be the, yeah, we'll say this is one of those mid-era Celtics teams with Kemba. I'll back that. Because with the Kyrie team, I don't know who else was scoring 20 with him. I don't think Tatum was there yet. No, unless this was, was this the 2018-19 season where it all fell apart? Kyrie at 26, Tatum just cracked 20, Brown at 15, and then you had Hayward getting up to 15 as well in his minimum games? Maybe. This might be 20. I, I think this might be 18-19, low-key. And then Smart at 10-7. See, see the answer. Okay, and then 19, what are we saying for this? Just the, oh, the late 2011. Yes. That's my guess. Okay. Uh, Where's oh, the, he didn't send us. Where's the answer? <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> the hell, RJ? 
RJ, we need the answers. I'm gonna. I have to go search the answer now because I want to know. Right? I don't like, think gonna... it's there. Oh, now you're just gonna go look it up. Yeah, I'm. I'll, I'll make it quick though. Um, okay. What the? I'm. I'm. Because now I want to know the answers. Don't you? Am I crazy? Don't no, I, I do too. I, I'm with okay. you. I'm gonna go on basketball reference too. We can. We can. Hold up. No, no, no. You look. Around. Look at the email screen, and I'm gonna read stuff to you from the years around where we guessed, and you can okay. tell me. Just, just All so right. like you know, what I'm saying. So we're not. So we guessed. Or let me look at. I'm just gonna go to Larry Bird's numbers. What what was the one we thought was Larry? Twenty twenty nine seven. Twenty nine. No, he had twenty nine nine. So, but that's an easy one to find out though, because I can just go to Celtics franchise it, it was league Tatum. leaders. You know what I'm saying? Celtics franchise. I don't know leaders. if Tatum's ever had. Oh, the twenty nine seven. That that's this year's team. <laughs> oh, right now. <laughs> yeah, that's that's literally oh. right now. So is this Tatum? This is Porzingis Brown. Porzingis oh, okay. is at twenty. Derek White is at fifteen. Drew Holiday is twelve three. That that was so obvious. In okay, it. I done. literally yeah, wrote all these. All, I looked at all these stats yesterday, and I they're all I thirds too. Point three, point seven. Okay, Squad B is yeah. right now. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Catastrophic. Let me go look at. I'll go look at the uh, the late twenty ten team, so we can see that quick. Okay. Um. Well, because now I want to know, right? I don't. I don't. No, I. I hanging. completely understand. I'm with you. Okay. Uh. Okay. You might have. I haven't found it yet, but you might be on to something there. Might be on. Because what is that? So it's 190189. Um. 18, 9, 17, 6. <laughs> yeah. From. T- is it, maybe it's 0910. I've looked at everything in between there. That's the only one. But these numbers do look around like what it would be. No, <clears throat> none of these are 19. What is the first one? 19. 19. No, no, none of these. Know. None of the late 2010 Celtics are that. This is catastrophic. Shh. I well, because I'm not. I'm sorry, uh, audio listeners. I'm not going to stop until I know. And I hope you can understand that because I need. I now need to know <laughs> what the answer to this question is. I'm trying uh, to see if I can, like, if there's a quick way to look at this. Uh, there's kind of not really like you kind of have to like, I don't think there is right. You just kind of, oh, 19, 0, 17, 6, 13, 9. Is that what it was? Uh, 19, 0, 18, 9. That's not it. Oh, what a disaster. <laughs> what a mess. What's the other one? We don't know. Maybe that's 25, 8. Maybe I can check the, oh man, this is frustrating. <laughs> Uh, nope, it's not the 2018-19 team. It's not the 2020-21 team. Is it the ni- it's not 19-20. It's not 19-20. Um, uh, nope, it's not that. Uh, I don't know <laughs> what to do. <laughs> I don't want to waste the whole podcast trying to find this, but I also really would like to know the answer to this question. <laughs> Maybe um, the uh, editing magic. Maybe uh, no, because I don't. I'm gonna. I'm gonna be editing this at two a.m. I don't want to go through and find this one. I'm Do we have a, at two a.m. So the twenty. This is just not relevant to the numbers on the screen, but the 2018 <laughs> season, Kyrie mm. was the only guy to crack twenty. Okay. Well, <laughs> uh, is that it? Nope. Oh man, RJ, I need you to let us know in the next one, I guess, because I, I'm, I'm lost. I, I, I kind of really want to know the answer to this question. This is what we're doing? <laughs> uh, oh, is this it? Nineteen six? Nope. Oh my fucking god! I, I don't want to spend any more time on this. Now it's kind of a disaster, I guess. So I, I suppose we will move on. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, I, I think we just we might have to move on unless I can find this like twenty five eight because that's a pretty large like number. Like, is there career leaders and points per game average of <clears throat> where's point per game average points per game <coughs> um, single season most points per game average in a single season Celtics? That might be the only way. And if this doesn't work, then I am. I'm just going to scrap it because I don't want to be irritating. Uh, 25-8. So the only person to ever average 25.8 points in a season was the 1986 Celtics. So that top one, squad A, is the 86 Celtics with Larry Bird there. Past that, 
yeah, the 19 points per it. game is <clears throat> maybe yeah, that's just a bad be... mid 90s team. Yeah, yeah, average 19.0 points in a season. I'm just one one stat muse check, um, <clears throat> and that's all I'm gonna all I'm gonna do for you. Um, except stat muse. <laughs> stat muse says uh, no shit. Well, no, they they have a paid service now, so it locks half the stats, so I can't see it. Oh, that's um, a no. <clears throat> yeah. So that's tough. Only. Yeah, I'm done with this. RJ, let us know who the last question is. I don't want to. I don't want to waste the podcast doing this. But thank you, RJ. So squad squad B is the current Celtics. Squad A is the 86 Celtics. Squad C, unknown for now. So RJ will have to let us know what that is. Uh, <clears throat> next email from Inferno Dragon. <laughs> Shout out the new uh, <clears throat> the new emailer. Bench thoughts plus rat list. Hey guys, hope you're doing well. It's my first email, so I doubt it'll be good or meaningful. But here goes nothing. It's always good and meaningful. We appreciate you. <clears throat> Hauser has actually impressed the hell out of me in real minutes he's been given. Forget the fourth quarter of the Wizards game. No, the shot isn't falling, but he's done everything else to make the game easier for guys at a pretty high level. From playing within their defense, excuse me, and not getting beat on that end, to screening really well for guys, to rebounding both ends. Maybe I'm crazy, but I feel like he's done everything they need him to, and it will only be up from there once the shots start falling. Either way, he draws the defender just by being a threat to shoot. That last point we talked about, and I'll give him credit, he had eight rebounds against the Wizards, and he has been playing solid defense, so... I'll back your point there, uh, Inferno Dragon. Uh, what's wrong with Pritchard? <laughs> I see no signs of preseason P really in any way. He's not able to shake defenders at all to get a shot off, and he's hardly even trying if he can. Uh, trying to, even if he can. I like some of the things I've seen on defense and as a playmaker for others, but Pritchard is out there to score, and it doesn't feel like he wants to right now. I understand the top-end talent on this team, um, but when he's in a lineup with a single J, he needs to find a way to be a second a secondary perimeter creator because it will open everything up for everyone. And right now he's not even a tertiary one. True. Stevens has to play plain and simple. I agree. <clears throat> I think you Good can play call. him and still have Hauser and Brissett in the rotation. But if it is abs, but if it absolutely has to be Stevens or Brissett, Stevens is more dynamic while offering the same amount of hustle and toughness, arguably more. Cornette has no role on this team. Sorry, I'd rather Cornette. go small ball with Brissett or have Keda when healthy at centers. And Stevens is an maybe. atrocious rebounder. It doesn't really have other real plus skills. I agree. Baton's a G leaker, and I hope people will finally accept that. Anyways, ratless game start times. They say the game started X time, and you wait 10 to 15 minutes past it for the actual tip off. Uh, sometimes more if it's a national tv game especially tnt i think tnt games start on tiny tnt, TNT games, games they are right on it because we <laughs> yeah. we do pre-games and then we have to like sprint out of here yeah tnt games are on time espn games are late but yes national tv games are whack also ratless tv coverage way too much time spent on a player's uh face after a made shot and we miss things like jb steel in the miami game agree that's all thanks for reading if you actually read it best hunter okay hunter not in of course we're gonna read it although yeah we appreciate you thanks for tuning in hunter uh and Thank you for uh, sending the email. Please send more. We appreciate you. <clears throat> Last one. Morning, guys. Uh, this is one band, one sound. Morning, guys. This is from RJ. Uh, this one is either stream of consciousness or free association or maybe just some random BS that makes sense in my head, but bear with me. One of my favorite little movies is 2002's Drumline starring a young Nick Cannon and a young Zoe Saldana because it was 21 years ago. Um, <clears throat> it is set at Atlanta a and a fictional HBCU and is set in the world of competitive marching bands. Think of Rudy, but replace the football scenes with killer drum riffs. It has great drumming, beautifully filmed. <clears throat> I think about this movie a lot watching the Celtics under Joe Mazzulla because in a lot of ways, he reminds me of Dr. Lee, the director at the A&T band played by Orlando Jones, a very tight and formal seeming guy who is all about musicianship and knowing your shit and being serious. You know, first season, Joe, his motto quoted in my title, one band, one sound, which reminds me of second season, Joe, um, Everyone has to play the right way or take a seat. Yes, I'm staring uh, a hole through you, Delano Ben. <laughs> anyway, watch a movie you haven't seen already because it's basically a sports movie with great drumming. And then and only then, after you've watched it, go read this fantastic review that was posted on SB Nation 10 years ago. Uh, then you'll understand why I think Hauser in the fourth quarter of the Wizards game was basically GQ trying to get to a spot and group back. Be well. I'll try to make some more sense next time, uh, RJ. Thank you, RJ. Also and if you have, yeah, also drummer. Shout out, RJ. If you have seen Drumline, that email made a lot more sense. I have not yet, so I, I need to not. get caught up. <laughs> I need to get. It would up. be kind of fire if Joe Mazzulla was not the Drumline guy, but actually J.K. Simmons and Whiplash, which you all show, also do not know what I'm talking about. But he's just a complete asshole in that movie. It's it's hysterical. Oh, I've seen the clips. I've seen the clips. I only yeah. know him as J. Jonah Jameson. So, I've seen the clips of that. Yes, but all right. 
let's move on to the NBA portion of the show. Uh, and we're going to start with the Spurs Suns game because it was maybe the craziest ending to a game we'll see all season. Uh, the Suns led for 47 or yeah, 47 minutes and oh no, 58.8 seconds of the game. No. Did you not? Do you not know what I'm talking about? I saw the end of the game, but I didn't know like that context to it. I saw, I saw what happened. Suns are up by 20 points, up by 20 at one point. Suns are, Uh, and that was the Spurs' first lead of the game. (laughs) Excuse me, for those of you who don't know what happened, Spurs overcame the deficit in the final moments of the game. Victor Wembanyama had a putback with like seven or eight seconds left. It brought the Spurs within one. The Suns passed the ball into Kevin Durant in the corner. He got trapped by Trey Jones. Kelton Johnson ripped the ball from his hands, got to the rim, finished the layup, put the Spurs up by one with 1.2 seconds left, their first lead of the game, and then the Spurs won the game. Kevin Durant was mad because, in his defense, he, he did get smacked in the face. Like he, he did. Like Kelton Johnson was reaching for the ball and l- literally drew blood, and Kevin Durant was like <laughs> had a scratch on his face and it was bleeding a little bit. Um, so you can understand why they were mad, but. From the perspective, in the moment when I watched it, it looked like a clean steal, so you can understand why the refs felt the same. Uh, But shout out the Spurs. It was a really fun game, really fun to watch them work their way back. Kelton Johnson looked good. Victor Wembanyama did his thing, 18 points, 8 rebounds, 4 blocks. Uh, Devin Vassell made a really clutch shot toward the end. And uh, the Suns really need their other star players back is is the conclusion. (laughs) Yeah, because they gutted their whole team, so it makes sense that they're not winning games if uh, they don't have the top of their roster playing because the rest of these guys are borderline fringe guys, a lot of them. Eric Gordon's a quality player that took a pay cut. And there's yeah. other guys like Yuta Watanabe that's a great fit next to KD, but for the rest of them, not a whole lot. Bull Bull isn't going to get you over the finish line. Phoenix, 2-2. Two and two. Spurs, 2-2. Two and two. Wemby era is upon us. Spurs are back. Yeah. Shout out to Spurs. They're fun. I'm enjoying it. Uh, all right. Let's talk about the James Harden trade just briefly. We did a whole video on it. So if you want to hear our thoughts on the Harden trade in full and how it affects the Celtics, potentially go watch that video. Um, some people said they were going through all the channels and, and called it clickbait because it doesn't affect the Celtics at all. And James, that Harden guy was back. lit. He was <clears throat> yeah. mad as hell. And it's like, it's not clickbait. We talked about it. We talked about how it might affect the Celtics. We literally delivered yeah. on what the title was. Whatever, man. You get mad. Luckily, this is our channel. We can, we're come to deliver, if you deliver want to call our, it our own opinions. Capitalizing on a story, do that, but don't call it clickbait because that's not what it was. You, sir, don't know what clickbait means. Anyways, James Harden and uh, James Harden, PJ Tucker, and Philip Petrosev were traded to the Clippers in exchange for Marcus Morris, Robert Covington, Nick Batum, KJ Martin, and I think a total of three first round picks and a pick swap and seconds heading to Philly. <clears throat> One of the picks is coming from the Thunder. Um, it's a Clippers pick via the Thunder. So the, the Thunder owed or the Thunder owned the Clippers 2026 pick, traded it to the Sixers. So it's the Clippers pick, but it came from the Thunder. And it's gonna probably be like something protected. So the Thunder would get it if it's like top five. In exchange, the Clippers sent the Thunder their 2027 pick swap. So the Thunder will be able to get the best of their two picks in 2027, which will probably be the Clippers by that point, you have to assume. Um so W for the Thunder. Now you have to assume that the Sixers are going to flip those assets in a couple months into something they else. They wanted those expirings, baby. That they did. They, they wanted that. free money. Yeah, but any thoughts on the Harden trade? We, we discussed it a lot in the video, so if you want to hear the full thoughts, go check that out. But we Many are it. asking, why would the Clippers trade for James Harden? Are they stupid? Uh, Maybe. James Harden, who really has never been that great of a playoff player. He really hasn't been a winning mm-hmm. player. He's been an MVP. The Rockets teams, when he was in his prime, were real teams. They were for real. But he's been involved in a lot of nonsense since leaving Houston. And it doesn't yeah. seem like uh, joining the Clippers, where he's going to have a weird battle for the ball with Westbrook and the other two stars there, is going to be the greatest spot for him to end up. He did play well in Philly last year when he actually did play. He Did he lead the league in assists, or was he second? When, last year? Last year. <clears throat> I don't know. Yeah, I'll look 11, it up. Right? I'll am look I, it up while you keep talking. Stupid? Um, but yeah, the Clippers are now uh, paying a lot of money to those three guys. They trade a they lot are. of bench pieces. He did 10.7. Uh, okay. Love league in, in average, yeah. I'm just curious to what they're going to do. Like, I don't, I don't really know how those guys all fit together. Does this make it easier for them to rest guys? Is that the plan? 
A lot of people are talking about so, the yeah. Clippers building their new arena with all the toilets and everything, and they want to have like real like names in there, what to get people to come sure. to the arena and enjoy it. So there's that aspect to this too, but they really are kind of picking a weird time to go all in because the West, we went through the predictions and we were like, there's so many teams out here. What are we all doing? Like, yeah. I, I think this would be the time to sell if I was a Western conference team that like was on the bubble. Cause I think we all kind of agree. Like, I think I put them high up in my standings because I think they have potential to meet the ceiling, but also like they could have very well been like, that's enough of this. We're going to give up and then start to plan for the future. But See, I don't think they're going to try and battle with all these other teams that were like, we don't even know who's going to make the play in. I don't think you can sell if you're the Clippers right now. I, I like as much as, as injured as they have been, you committed to this Kawhi Paul George thing to abandon it. Like even if they had been fully healthy and it failed, like, four years in like it, it's not like they've had it for 10 years and it's failed like adding Harden is absolutely a risk and I was listening to front office show with Keith Smith and Trevor Lane and they talked about it a point that I agree with this definitely raises their ceiling but it also probably lowers their floor <clears throat> if everything goes wrong <clears throat> you know they can rest Paul George and Kawhi and, and Harden can take over in that sense you have an extra guy who can play make, who can shoot, who can do all those things. Um, you still have solid depth, actually. You still have, you know, Plumlee at your center spot and Zubach. You still have Norm Powell off the bench. You still have Terrence Mann. Now you have PJ Tucker, too. So, like, you still do have a solid Bones Highland. So, you still have a solid team there in um, in L.A., and, and you still have those guys. And even if guys do get hurt, and then you have the others of the four. And Russell Westbrook's actually been good since he joined the Clippers. So I'll give he has credit. been. Yes, but also now he has to battle for the ball. So I don't like I think he's going to get get put into a similar sit or a more similar situation to what he was with the Lakers. I disagree. It's not going to be exactly the same because he's not going to have as much ball handling duties. I don't I don't know. I don't I don't know if that's guaranteed. I, I think it'll be fine, especially because one Harden can shoot. So it's not the same in LA. You had the three stars who all needed the ball and all couldn't shoot the ball. That's not the case in LA. Like Harden can shoot. Paul George can shoot, Kawhi can shoot, and also they played together before, so like there's a familiarity there. They know how to play. That, that Rockets team was a real hoss. They were a playoff team. They, it's not, I'm not saying they were amazing, but they know how to play together, which is fine. Uh, so I think that'll help. I, I'm not saying it's going to be perfect. I, I'm out on the Clippers right now. I don't think they'll be very good. Uh, I think they'll be fine. But you, I can see the vision, and I can see why they would think this makes them a better team. That said. They don't control their draft picks till 2030 now. So that's that's tough. That's a tough look. I like, I feel like if I'm the Clippers and I'm running in this new arena and trying to get people to, you know, buy in and, and build something, these guys are all mad old. Like they're not going to be around forever. Even even if you want to stick with this core, right? Because you made the argument they haven't really had this team together very long. It's very quick to give up on it. And I think that's a fair point. But like, how old is Kawhi? 33, 34? Are, he is 32. Okay. 32. Uh, Paul George is also old. Harden's 34. Um, Kawhi's 32. Paul George's 33. Norm Powell's old. Mm, relatively. 30. Norm. Like, there's not a lot of longevity with this 30. team, is what I'm saying. Like, their window <laughs> no. is closing whether they elected to get rid of these guys or not. And they're just going all in at a very strange time. Like, there, there's too much talent out West to really be like, we unequivocally made the correct decision. But I only disagree because I do think there's a world where this Clippers team makes the finals. I don't think we're living in that world, but I think they're I, I think they have the talent and the pieces to potentially make the finals in this in this season. Sure, the potential's there, but I just don't like like you said, you don't think it's this world. And I know you have to take the risk. Okay. You can't just only compete if you think you have the best team. You can't. Yeah, that's. With that helpful. being said, basketball is probably the sport where the better teams win more often. There aren't as many Cinderella NBA teams. The Heat were an exception to that last year, and even then, they still had the core that they got went to in the finals. Uh, two or <laughs> two of the last three finals prior to last season. Sure. Or no, no, two of the last three Eastern Conference Finals. Now it's two of the last four finals. But still, yes. they've, they've been successful with this team, is my point. So even as fluky as that might have felt at the time, the, the signs were there. They've done it. It's not baseball where a Diamondbacks team is going to sneak into the playoffs and all of a sudden make the World Series. So if the Clippers turn into the Diamondbacks, which they are unequivocally the opposite of, 
uh, a team I don't of think young that's players. a fair comparison. Okay. Uh, the Clippers, I don't know. Have, it's not like the Clippers have been bad and now they're looking to push with an aging core. They've made the playoffs. They've just failed in the playoffs because of injuries. And when Kawhi's been healthy, they've conference dominated, finals. right? They've been good. They made the conference finals they, once, they even with the ACL. guys hurt. Exactly. They got hurt and that's fine. But like you have a guy in Kawhi who has literally dragged a team to a championship after he's a failure. You have a guy like Paul George who has taken teams to the Eastern Conference Finals multiple times. You have James Harden who has dragged Rockets teams to the Eastern Conference Finals. And, and I'm not saying he didn't have help, but like he was that team, right? And you he, have he was Russell a high Westbrook guy. <clears throat> yeah, and you have Russell Westbrook who has made the playoffs time and time again. Like he is he look at and the best example when I talk about Russell Westbrook, look at that Wizards team. That Wizards team made the playoffs because Russell Westbrook was a dog, right? And that's not a fun, like, it's not the perfect example because they were the eighth seed and they got bounced, but, like, he was nasty. And you have guys who have won in the regular season before. And I, I think, again, I don't personally believe the Clippers will make the finals. But if Kawhi's healthy, if Paul George is healthy, Harden's healthy, Westbrook's healthy, and they all buy in, it's a lot of ifs. But if that happens, I can see a world where they make the finals. Where do you rank them? And so... Uh, in the west just curious it, it doesn't have to be concrete but like in in the uh same area code as team xyz personally i'd probably put them on par with the the lakers warriors group that's like second tier behind the sun's nuggets okay um and i'm curious honestly, to see what it yeah. looks like i just don't know if it works out like that again basketball is like the most like usually the on paper team is a hoss yeah. and they're gonna take care of business denver is that team their young guys have filled in the gaps that they created this summer by letting Brown and Green walk. Yeah. Jokic is still playing out of his mind. Murray is mm -hmm. going to probably make his first all-star appearance this year. All of those guys are a well-oiled machine. I don't know if anybody's going to beat them. Is this Clippers team going to beat them? Maybe, maybe not. But it's just weird. Like, the timing is weird. That That's my point. It's weird. <clears throat> sure. I don't know. Uh, all right. Let's move on to a... a something that came out as a result of the Harden trade. Uh, according to Chris Mannix of Sports Illustrated, Zach Levine and OG Ananobi linked to the 76ers as potential trade targets. Makes sense. I mean, they're two star level players on teams that are bad and could potentially blow it up by the deadline. The Sixers have as much matching salaries you could possibly need now and the picks to make a deal work to intrigue these other teams if you have a Clippers pick. If I'm the Bulls or, or the Raptors and they dangle a Clippers 2027 20, or 26 or whatever pick in front of me, I'm like, yeah, I might want that. I, yeah. I think it could be a good pick. And so if either of those teams blow it up, I could see either of those players helping. I think we might differ on this. I think... Zach Levine might be the better option over OG and Obi. I, I, I think you add that extra scoring punch. I think it's more important than the extra defense, especially if they can keep a Nick Batum in the trade and have the defensive and beat on the inside. And they already have like Anthony Melton's a solid defender. Pat Bev's out there. You, you've got Nick Batum. If, he, if he's there, I think Tobias Harris, an underrated defender at this point, he's turned it around a little on that. end. so I, I think adding that extra scoring punch and that extra, you know, Embiid, Maxi, and if they're not on, you have Levine, who at his best is a damn efficient, like tertiary option. Like he, he can be a guy who just shoots 50 40 and, and plays his role. It's just he's been he's been pigeonholed into a, a Bulls team where, okay, be the main guy. And they're just mid because he, that's not what he's like. That's not him. So my biased opinion is Zach Levine sucks and he's a losing player. I know. My unbiased opinion is if Zach Levine goes to Philly, that team can be good. Yeah, but I think it may create a weird dynamic between him and Tyrese Maxey, where Why? he's playing a similar taking the ball out of Maxey's hands role See, that Harden would be. He's not going to be Mister High Usage like Harden, Mister Lead the League in assists like Harden, but I think it creates some sort of question: who's the the secondary scorer? Who's the tertiary scorer? I think Philly wants Maxey to be the secondary guy. And if that's the case and they bring in Levine and make him be the third guy and he's on board, then it'll probably go fine. That's what I think, yeah. But if you're dead set on that, and I don't really know much about Levine, seriously, like <laughs> on on the surface, every time I see Zach Levine, it, he's doing something that screams bad attitude, but I'm not always watching, okay? I want to make that very clear. So with my very limited knowledge of Zach Levine, I'm not positive he's going to be, hey, that's fine. I'll do whatever it takes, guy. He could be. Sure. And, you know, from, I guess, humanity standpoint, you root for people doing the right thing. But 
I think you're better off going after Ananobi because that gives you an excellent defender, which is maybe going to be more useful than Zach Levine. I don't know how much extra scoring Philly needs because I think as a tertiary guy, Harris actually isn't that bad. <clears throat> yeah, he's good. He could be very well a part of a deal to bring one of those guys in, though, so he might not be there. But I think uh, the defense yeah. that Ananobi brings is going to help you against Boston. It's going to give you a little bit of extra help against Milwaukee. I, I think Sneaky even more interesting. You package those matching salaries and two firsts for Siakam. Don't hate it. Don't hate it. <clears throat> I think he. it's not as perfect because he's not as good of a shooter, but you have his uh, secondary ball handling abilities Super in there. cool spins. <clears throat> Yep, his familiarity with Nick Nurse. Actually, with Scotty Barnes' latest comments on Nick Nurse, is like, yeah, it's whatever. Cool to see him. I don't know how much any of those Raptors guys want to go to Philly. Correct, so yeah. We'll have to see what happens there. Um, well, Scotty Barnes was not a member of the championship team. He came in after that. So those guys that won a true. championship under Nurse might have different views on him. I don't know. Again, not really true. close to that situation or follow it very very strictly. But I wonder if it's a... Uh... If the Bulls would be better, or excuse me, the Sixers would be better off going after Caruso. I like that fit better than than other things, and it'd probably be a little cheaper. Cheaper. <clears throat> I like. Yeah. It. Anyways, so they did get some good depth pieces out of that. Yeah, I like Batum, especially. Uh, all right, let's take a look at the last two bookkeeping or housekeeping, whatever you want to call it, items. You uh, the Hornets is the same thing. I, I wasn't sure which one you said. Well, you say the bookkeeping Hornets... for the sake of this for the transition. Sure. <laughs> the Hornets declined. Oh, the Hornets <laughs> declined the option on James Booknight, their fourth year option. You don't see this often. This is like effectively if the Celtics said, Oh, Pritchard, you have a second team option. Yeah, we don't want you. Right. This is, you don't yeah. see team options declined on rookies often. He was so, a lottery pick, right? Yeah. He's, I think he's 11th pick in the draft. So this, this is really a, yeah, hand up our bad. James Booknight kind of sucks. Uh, we shouldn't have picked them. And let's take a look at who they passed on to pick James Booknight. I was high in the Booknight pick when they drafted him. He felt like he could be a good secondary guy um, next to LaMelo. He just hasn't turned into anything. Passed on, actually, maybe not too much. Um, what draft was that? 2021. They picked him at 11th. Duarte went 13. Moody went 14, Kispert 15, maybe Kispert. Shangoon went 16. Maybe that's a wish. Shangoon, she got thinking dog. <clears throat> Trey Murphy went 17. That would have been a good pick. And then p- anything past that is like, okay, we'd be really reaching. And the rest of that first round is kind of like meh anyways. So <laughs> fine. They got. That was the. No, that was not the COVID draft. <clears throat> no, COVID draft was 2020. Okay. Um, but yeah, sucks. Hornets whiff. Uh, last piece of news here. The Grizzlies have signed or are going to sign Bismack Miyombo. Once John Morant misses five games, they get like an exception slot where they can bring in an extra player. So I think they're going to bring in Bismack Miyombo in that slot. Obviously, Steven Adams is out for the rest of the season. Uh, I think knee injury he's having surgery on, so he, he won't be there. Uh, what What is he having surgery on? I think it's his knee. I think you're right. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, I look it up and I don't get the answer. Um, yeah, it's knee injury. It's just, it's just not telling me knee surgery. Yes. Thank you. Jesus. It's a secret. Um, yeah. So bringing in Bismack Biombo, fill a role. He was a guy we talked about that could potentially be a solid addition for the Celtics. So surprising. He went this long on sign, but he'll, he'll have a role there in Memphis for the time being, especially because they just have Xavier Tillman, then nobody else. Cause Brandon Clark is also hurt and Sal- Santi Aldama is missing time now too. So they, they just got no big man tap next to Jared Jackson right now. Memphis Bismack might want to tank if they have their pick tank. Yeah. Maybe <laughs> four games in, you're already, you know, one uh, 20th of the way there. Tough. All right, let's uh, let's get into the Rattlers here. Uh, and I will let you lead it off. Uh, I would say, you know, Rattlers being sick, but you enjoy it. So what's your no, being a sick fire? Good, good thing. Uh, Rattlers Frank. So my birthday this was is like Saturday. second in a row. Frank's getting the salute. Did, wait, did I already tell this? Oh, no, 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 no. This was a different story. All right. So Saturday <laughs> was my birthday. Sure. Yes. And Frank like hits me up. He's like, you do anything for your birthday? I was like, oh, I'm going to dinner, blah, blah, blah. But afterwards, if you guys like this was a little group chat, like, if you guys want to do something, we can do some fun. He's like, oh, no, I was just making sure you're not singing in your house all day. I have my nephew's birthday. <laughs> so then I hang out with Frank and a couple other people yesterday. And he's just like, tell me a story about them going out on Saturday. I was like, I think it's your nephew's birthday, you prick. All of a sudden, all of a sudden you weren't so busy, huh? <laughs> they, I, I didn't really care. They get around, he scammed you. Much. He said it's, it's more about the like, just just say no, you don't want to do anything. It's fine. 
What do I care? Yeah. I see my friends a good amount. But <laughs> did yeah, he, rat did move. He just, like lied? <laughs> I don't know if he lied or they had like plans set already, but it was a weird thing to be like, hey, you doing anything? And I'm like, oh, why? Do you want to do something? He's like, yeah, no, go fuck yourself. <laughs> that is weird. I agree. Frank needs uh, to I a will... cameo so I can talk about him more and people will have like a reference for Frank. Mm. Mm-hmm. I will uh I'll rattle us. So when we we didn't corral us on the show when we had him on the show, he talked about like how everyone needs to use the zipper method when merging. Correct. And I agree, zipper method is correct. Yeah. However, you should not be allowed to take part in the zipper method if you are going to go in front of me and then go below the speed limit. Oh. Like because that ruins the whole zipper method. Because then true. all the people behind are are you know blocked up and, and stuck trying to get in into the lane, and you are just going like five miles an hour below the speed limit in front. And now I'm mad because I'm going to miss the light. It's like if you're, you're if putting we're a going lot of trust to... into someone to let them go ahead of you and they exactly. betray that trust. If we're going to enforce the zipper method, which we should, I'm not saying I'm against it. People have got to go the speed limit and they've got to be human beings and not, you know, brain dead. I'm telling you speed range, best change that yeah. could ever be made. Strict speed range. That way, in. that way people can get clapped for going too slow in, in on the speed range. I like it. So I'll say, uh, Ratless, my dad, but not a real Ratless because oh, no. he's the best. Uh, but <laughs> so yesterday's Halloween, and my house traditionally has absolutely nobody come to trick or treat. We had four total people come to the house yesterday. <laughs> okay, my dad bought like a whole thing of candy. Oof. He has also lived here since I lived here, so he knows that nobody comes to this house for trick or treat. <laughs> sure. And we just had like candy sitting in our house before, so I don't know why he went and got more candy. He could have gave out like full size bags of gummy bears and been like a hero. <laughs> but now we just have a bunch of little Hershey bars in the house, and I'm gonna have to help get rid of them. That's not Ralph. That's a good thing. W. Uh, you see, you're like out on being sick. I'm out on eating junk food all the time. Oh, you're a piece of shit. So, <laughs> um, I'm trying to think. I don't have much today. I mean, our route was Duke. He's still in the cage. He's still, he's still recovering, but Duke. So I have to like put him on a leash and bring him outside mm. to pee. Cause he can't like run around. So I have to make sure he's you just have to like, carry out there. him out there. <clears throat> no, you can walk. He's fine. But he doesn't pee when I take him out. He like refuses, but then my mom will come home and he'll go out and be like, yeah, I'll pee now. He's just like, he's just an asshole. He like, he, yeah, he doesn't do it for me, and I, but I have to let him out every time because I'm not gonna not let him out before I leave. I'm actually when I as I say that I'm not letting him out before I leave now because I let him out an hour ago, so he's fine. Yeah. Um, but he just doesn't like pee when I let him out. He's just a dick, and he walks around like an asshole and chills. But uh, <clears throat> boring ratless for me today. I don't think I have much. I, I had a good day. I've been hanging out. I've been chilling. It sucks when you have a good day. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> oh, I'll ask you this. So this this isn't rat court, but this is just kind of an opinion question. I was talking to Bobby Karitsky today. And sure. I was talking about like seasons and stuff. I think fall bleeding into winter is the best time of year by far. Best, best season. Uh, I kind of agree. I think the the blend is always the best, whether yeah. it's winter into spring or spring into summer or this fall. Like this area of fall is great. Halloween's a good holiday, good movies with it. Uh, Halloween's fun. Then you have Thanksgiving. People like Thanksgiving. Food's good. My girlfriend, who never like eats anything, is like, I'm just sitting here thinking about my Thanksgiving plate. I'm like, well, that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> then you have Christmas, and everybody gets rock hard for that. I love Christmas, and you know, it serves you right. So you can't. I don't even know if you can hear me. Serves you right for freezing as you shit on Christmas, Sam. I'm filibustering, so I don't have to edit this. I'm like, here. I'm here. Yeah. I, I I was telling you off the when you playoffs. I learned maybe not aren't the most wonderful time of the year last year. <laughs> It, was, it said, wasn't fun. I mean, you, you were frozen. I said, serves you right for freezing when you shit on Christmas. That's, that's Christmas is good. lame. Nah, fuck so it. lame. I saw people you tweeting shit. about my, Mariah Carey today, and I was none too I, pleased. I will say, she, she did. She's genius. Like she, she's just she said for life off that one fucking song. Like yeah, she, no. Her <laughs> and Jay Z. Jay Z did the New York song, and if you go to Times yeah. Square, they just play that on a loop. Like that man has to be making like at least. Thirty dollars an hour, like enough to like never even like yeah. leave your room again, and you'd make like a normal living wage. <laughs> it, they just from them in Times Square playing uh, Empire State of Mind. Just... I saw someone tweet, uh, "Mariah Carey found the infinite money glitch." <laughs> yeah, her and Jay Z. That's why you eat, you take the dinner with Jay Z. 
over 500. Have you heard that? What is it? People are like, would you rather have 500 yeah. million or dinner with Jay Z? Like, there was he's a like, video. Yeah, just make a song about New York. There was a video. There was a video of somebody walking up to him and he goes, Jay Z, I love you. I'm taking the money, bro. I'm, t- <laughs> I'm taking the money. <laughs> and uh, there was another thing. It's that everyone's talking about Mariah Carey's song. Everyone forgets the. Uh, I forget her name, but the, you know, you know the Thanksgiving like meme where it's like greens, beans, potatoes, tomatoes. No, and, I don't you, know that. What? Yeah, no, nah, hold up. Tim Where's Robinson it? needs to make a drive through for Thanksgiving. <laughs> fifty five turkeys, fifty five sweet potato pies or sweet potatoes. Pumpkin I pies. can't believe you haven't heard this. Hold no. up, hold. While you look for that, VAR. I found oh, it. Don't even mind. bother. I should have moved. I'm the rack. quick. Sorry. Also, I love that uh, they have a zillion. Google yeah, Pixel that. commercials. I got beans, greens, potatoes, tomatoes, lamb, rams, hogs, dogs, chicken, turkeys, rabbits. You name it. Look. <laughs> Wait for it. Wait for I it to come beans, in. Greens, potatoes, tomatoes, oh, lamb, yeah. Rams, hogs, yeah. Dogs, beans, greens, potatoes, tomatoes, chicken, turkeys, rabbits. You name it. Beans, greens, potatoes, I can't believe you haven't seen this. <laughs> no, I haven't seen this. Beans, greens, potatoes, tomatoes, chicken, turkeys, yeah. chicken, turkeys, beans, greens, potatoes, tomatoes, lamb. This is better than all you want for Christmas. This is better than anything they do for Christmas. I'll tell you that. It's elite. It's a great song. Uh, uh, it's what, what the hell Cheryl Douglas. Saying? Is that her name? Did I say it right? Uh, sh- uh, Shirley Caesar. Sorry. Yeah, no, that's that's elite. That's that's a Thanksgiving song. Uh, I don't know what you're saying. I apologize. I, but I, had, I, to, <clears throat> I had to interrupt you. That was it was important. That's OK. That was um, a good interruption. W interruption. But, uh, OK. Other rat list. Ray. Yeah. Ray, who is also <laughs> a friend of the show. So this was this all. St- I'll kind of loop this all in one big story so we can wrap. Sure. So yesterday I, I hung out with him, Frank and Joe. Joe who will also be on not the rat list. He'll be featured in a rat list story later. Um. So Ray, one of the most excited people I've ever seen to give out candy to kids, dude. I'll tell you that this man <laughs> has like torches in his front lawn, like leading up to the door. He's got like decorations and stuff. He's a preschool and, teacher, though, right? So he like works. Yeah. With kids. Okay. Yeah. Well, he should be on a list, but that's neither here nor there. <laughs> uh, they should. So, anyways, I go over and we're gonna watch a movie yesterday. That's why I went. And he yeah. wants to give out all the candy before we all start. That's fine. He wants to make sure everybody gets what they want they want to you know uh help out all the trick-or-treaters so anyways he's making this big charade of like he's like in his neighborhood he's like last call for candy like just leave the bowl out there if somebody comes they can just take the whole bowl he's like well i'm gonna give the whole bowl to whoever comes next just leave it out there don't make it about you (laughs) he's trying to become someone's hero on halloween it was the craziest (laughs) thing yeah. Someone in the comments would be like, "Wow, look at Sam like ratlisting someone for trying to have fun on Halloween." Well, <laughs> he was being annoying about it. You had to be there. And then uh, this is the best story I have. So ratless the people at the the bar on Saturday. So I told you Frank went to the bar. Also, who went to the bar was Joe. They both went uh, for a Halloween thing, so they dressed sure. up. Sure. Frank was a character from the Bear. I don't know what character, but he dressed up. And sure. Joe. Joe dressed up as Oppenheimer. Now, (laughs) Joe went to the bar and he had worked very hard in his costume and nobody (laughs) knew who he was supposed to be. Well, yeah, it's just a normal fucking dude. (laughs) He had a hat on. Uh, Let me see if I can pull out the picture, actually. Oh, man. And and I'll share a screen. I gotta get a full screen. Time. Stand by, stand by. <laughs> That's but all he... time for a couple of reasons. Because one, no one's gonna know who he is. And two, like you're just the Correct. dude who killed millions and millions of people. Nobody <laughs> knows. Nobody was gonna know Yo, who he was. What are we, Absolutely what are we correct. Doing, Joe, come on, man. Oh, um. Geez. Oh, I'm gonna have to. This is gonna take me a minute. But uh, not only was he. Oh fuck off. <laughs> Say I'm not a good multitasker. If you'll learn, not not only was he. <laughs> Was he uh, uh, unrecognizable, but he was upset that people were not recognizing him. <laughs> so I guess Frank was trying to get him to talk to a girl at the end of the night. Sure. And he was like, no, nah, dude, I'm so heated right now. I don't want to talk to anybody. <laughs> All right. I'm going to share his screen. Yeah. Uh, uh, Frank and Joe's family is very angry family. They're, they get angry very, very easily. <laughs> Frank's electric. Frank is the man. I love Remove the rat. Him. Actually, I can do it. I got I it. it. It's right here. Okay. Uh, man, how's this? Amazing. Stupid. Did I lose? Okay, it's right here. 
<laughs> just want to make sure because it it made me open Messenger. Mm. But then, like when I went to show the tab, it says Facebook. So here's Joe's Oppenheimer costume. Would you know who he is? <laughs> 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 no, I would have no idea who Joe is. <laughs> or is does Oppenheimer wear a blue t-shirt? <laughs> I don't know. I guess he does. Because I was telling somebody else about this. They were like, oh yeah, look, blue. But absolute <laughs> catastrophe. Not a single person recognized him. And I just imagine him getting more and more mad. Like they come up to him, they're like, Oh, like what are you supposed to be? Indiana Jones? And he just like fucking throws a fit. <laughs> he does look like Indiana Jones. <laughs> He put in a lot of effort. I think he like really tried on this. He was telling us like he like went out, like found all the stuff, spent like money on it, and nobody cared. That's fire. That's fire. All right, we can wrap there. That was a good way to end it. Thank you all for tuning in to About Them Celtics. We appreciate you very much. Again, we're recording this portion of the show, the majority of it, um, before the Celtics Pacers game, but you will get at the beginning of the episode our reaction to that game. So Appreciate y'all for tuning in. Make sure to subscribe to How About Them Celtics. Uh, as I mentioned on the last pod, if you don't listen or watch on, or not watch, but if you don't listen on Spotify and Apple, jump on over there. Leave us a rating anyways. Uh, it helps the algorithm. It helps us get out to more people. And the audio platform is tougher to sort of gauge where we're at. So thank y'all for tuning in. And I'll let Sam wrap it up. Hey, yes. Thank you very much for listening or watching today. Uh I don't know how bad I sound, but if I sounded bad, we appreciate you sticking with me. It wasn't that bad. Okay. Um, but make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel. You can hit the notification bell too. So you don't miss any of our daily uploads, even if they are clickbait sometimes like the guy said on the Harden video. Uh, you can also leave a like, leave a comment, tell us uh, about your Halloween or your rat list or whatever. You can find us on Spotify and Apple. Like Jack said, uh, leave a follow there. Leave a five star review. Say something ni- nice about us because we do love the audio listeners too. We've heard from a couple of them in the last couple of weeks and it's been awesome. You can subscribe or follow or join the playback community, playback.tv. And it's just the name of the podcast as you see it on the screen. Not thrilled with playback right now as they have blacked out the NBA games, but whenever we figure it out, we'll be back. And those streams are a ton of fun. Everyone's in the comments. We're all watching the game together. Uh, if it's a game that matters, you can see me get upset. It'll be a good time. You won't regret it. Social media, follow at How About Them C's on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Facebook is just the name of the podcast. You can follow Jack on Twitter at Jack's Money NBA. You can follow me at Sam LaFrance NBA. It's it for us. Bye. Check, check, go.